Hello everyone and welcome to Best Side Cycling. Uh, today we're doing something really different as uh, the Pacific Northwest right now is sort of full of smoke, so it's sort of hard to ride outside. So I decided to make a mini streaming setup for Swift, which is the online sort of cycling training platform. And today, as in the spirit of the channel, we're tackling the Alp to Swift, which is one of the sort of notorious times in the uh, game. It's modeled right after the Alpe d'Huez, which is a 10.9-mile uh, climb with 3,400 feet of elevation, and sort of well known to have the 21 hair points or hairpins as you are riding up the hill. Today, I'm trying to do it in less than one hour, and <laughs> last time I got pretty close, getting to about 10.1 uh, to get it today. Um, I'll probably need to hold an average watts per kilo of 3.2 across the whole way. Fortunately, I'm actually quite the light rider, just about 50 kilograms, so that's just holding around 150 watts or so. I honestly don't know how this is going to go, as I've never tried doing something like this, so I'm probably not really going to be able to talk too much as I'm actually doing the tent coming up right now. And also, there's going to be a fan, the fan noise coming in. But I'll definitely try to check in every now and then, and especially near the end. But anyway, um, with that said, here we go, and let's see what happens. Hello, everyone. This is Best Side Cycling from the Future. Unfortunately, I wasn't really able to commentate much throughout the ride as I was really out of breath, giving it my all to try to make it up this climb. I wanted to give some context about what's happening as well as commentate on the ride itself and give some tips. This is Swift, a virtual cycling platform and the way that it works is that I'm on a bike connected to a smart trainer. That tra trainer transmits power data to the game shown on the top left and it's basically an objective measure of how hard I'm pedaling. It's mainly comprised of the cadence or RPM data you see there which is how fast I'm spinning on the pedals as well as the torque which isn't shown but is used to calculate just that power number there. Also, you see the beats per minute, which is my heart rate. It's hovering pretty low right now at about 120, but that's gonna rise up really quickly as we get into this ride to the 160, 170 mark where it's gonna hold for most of this hour as I'm really trying to hit my threshold for what kind of power I can put down for that time. Other cool piece of information you can see is at the top, there's my speed and the elevation that I've ridden so far and just how the current time I'm on for the Alpe de Swift. The Alpe de Swift is a, probably the most famous climb on the Swift platform. It's made sort of as a direct replica of the Alpe d'Huez at 10.9 miles, 3,400 feet of elevation, resulting in a gradient of 8.5%. It's really neat as there's a lot of UI features here that really point out just to help out the riders as they're doing this and helping them pace and so on. So the first thing you see is all the marked hairpins. So there's 21 hairpins in total and they basically serve as checkpoints for this ride. Each one has its own specific lap marker on the left where it tells me my average beats per minute, my power and the total time it took me to finish it. About all the segments aren't exactly the same length there's ones that are longer and shorter, but they all sort of in, are in the 0.2 to 0.3 mile range of, in length. And the gradients themselves as well vary a little bit, but um, the Swift also has a convenient scheme for that as well. As you can see, there are ones that are marked red, uh, marked orange, and marked yellow. And those denote the gradient levels of 10% 10, 10 and above, but for this ride, effectively 10 to 13%. Uh, the orange stands for, I think, the 8 and 9% range, and uh, yellow is definitely 6 and below. So that gives you an indication of like how steep things are going to be coming up. But generally speaking for this ride, it's not very apparent. There's only one section, one sh really short section where the gradient even goes to zero, I think, and slightly negative. Uh, other than that, this is a very consistent ride given that the gradient actually averages 8.5%, there isn't a lot of room for it to uh, go much below that. So in terms of my first tip coming up is probably one of the most sort of noticeable ones is for each of these hairpins that you come across, 
As you start to approach it, for whatever reason, the gradient just drops really low. And I mean like for into the 2-4% to 4 range. And I think this is a great opportunity to do one of two things. One is if you're really just trying to get up this climb for the first time, use those opportunities to rest. Um, it's just a good chance you can get uh, just a break for your legs. If you're trying to uh, crank out the fastest time you can, then I think uh, even in reality, um, the, what you would probably want to do is just that's the time to sort of put down some extra power. That will make it so that you have a lot more momentum for the hill ahead. It's sort of just like the same thing you would do um, before any real hill in real life. You would try to pick up as much speed as you can so you can hopefully hold some of that momentum going forward. So we can just see that in action here as we approach the very first check mark of this ride where it drops right down here to 4% and then keeps us going. Um, this one was actually not the, the, the shallowest one. There's other ones that are definitely much um, shallower as, as we'll see in the future in the ride. But anyway, so going off what I was mentioning earlier with the power numbers, um, the most important sort of metric they use in terms of climbing hills here in the game is called is, is watts per kilogram. So that's just how much you weigh that you input to this game versus the power number. I'm, as you can see, a very small and skinny rider. So I'm just at about 100, 708 pounds, which I think is like 48, 49 kilograms. So for me to make it up this hill, um, others already have calculated to make it under an hour that you would need to average at least 3.2 watts per kilo. So that's right about probably around 155, 160 watts here. So that's probably going to be the, my measure as you see as I'm going through this. Um, just making sure that I stay consistently there. You definitely want to pace yourself for this. And it's not really much of a sprint for this ride as it's going to be about an hour effort at that, at that sort of pace. The next tip that I wanted to give and something that I'll really start to implement and you'll see me doing is um, standing up while on the trainer to generate power. Uh, the difference for in, in this uh, when you're riding on Swift is that you don't have to balance your bike. So in real life when I'm climbing, there's no way I'd be able to stand for a majority of the ride or even like for much periods of time because of all the extra effort that I need to balance the bike and keep going. It takes a lot more energy. Here, using a trainer though, you don't have to worry about the bike falling over or anything. So in my experience using this and climbing, it's actually one of the best ways I found to get some extra power out and still holding a uh, relatively not as high level of effort. So I would definitely recommend for anyone to try it. I've been told that this strategy might work a lot better for sort of smaller riders, but I'm not sure. At least for me, it's really paid dividends. And honestly, also, it takes a lot more time outside of the saddle, which isn't always the most comfortable on indoor trainers. So that's a big plus as well. Um, as we keep going here, I did want to give one more tip as well, which is in this game, the way that it works is that it simulates the gradient as resistance in the trainer. So basically the more higher, the steeper it is at 13% right now, the trainer obviously gets harder and makes it harder for you to pedal. In this game, there is a setting called the trainer difficulty. And what that does is that it does not make you any faster up the hills per se. It just makes it sort of simulate more flat, flatter environments. So to dig that in detail, if you had a trainer difficulty of 50%, it would make a 12% gradient feel like 6% gradient or what it thinks a 6% gradient should feel like. Um, that's not going to make your power number automatically higher. It's just going to make it feel easier to generate. Like imagine uh, doing a flat ride instead of a, a climb. So if you're, so I mean, the, the power realistically shouldn't change in a way because you you're a, it's still the same amount of force and spinning that you're doing. It's just a matter of how it feels as you're doing it, whether there's resistance or not. I think to be forthright for this setting, for this run, I don't think it's set at 100%. I think I had it at 80% when I did this. Um, for I do eventually plan to do a virtual Everesting, which is basically riding this 
times about nine or 10, and that is to reach the height of Mount Everest, you need to have it at 100% to, to qualify for that. So for that, I would want to make sure that I have sufficient gears to make it feel, um, to sort of not knock the edge off the climbs and make sure I can still do what I'm doing here. Though I do think I probably have enough gears on this current bike, even if the trainer wasn't set at 80% and 100% instead. So here you see 14% gradient, and I think from what I remember, that is really the, the steepest pitches it's gonna get. Overall, it's just a very steady, I'd say eight to 11% range throughout the most of the ride. And, but you get these cool little breaks, as I mentioned before with the hairpins, having it come down all the way. Um, sometimes just for a brief moment, but sometimes it is like a good like five, four seconds where it's at that 3% range. And it just feels just for that moment of sort of euphoria that it feels like you could just pedal uh, on the pedals like normal instead of uh, slogging through this climb. So in ter other than that, in terms of tips, I think it's just a matter of really practicing a couple times and just seeing how to pace yourself. It's really nice in this app how they just split up every single hairpin as a, as a checkpoint and then you can sort of just see how you're doing. In terms of the checkpoints themselves, they're not spaced evenly, but roughly speaking, when the, they are proportional to the uh, percentage of the ride. I would say that when you're at the 10, 11 uh, hairpin, you're basically at 50%, but maybe slightly less. I think it's a little bit top weighted in terms of where the actual elevation is. But other than that, it's roughly good enough for most people to um, generate an idea. Or the better way to measure that is just to look at your current elevation. If you're doing this ride only from scratch, then you can just look at this number. If you did some riding before, then obviously you will need to just see and offset it and just see where you're at. But just remember that this, this, this ride is about 34 feet of elevation. So whether that's in meters, I think about a about thousand something meters, um, just keeping that number in mind, you can really just have a strict good idea of how far you're into this climb. So anyway, in terms of me going through right now, um, you see that my beats per minute have now <laughs> reached that mark of 160, which I think it'll basically stay for a majority of this ride. Um, I'm going to be probably fast forwarding most of this as I know there's, there's a ton of things to watch through. I'll also include a time snap below in case you just want to skip ahead to where I'm almost done the ride.
we've made it to the final 21st hairpin and checkpoint. From here, it's a clear shot to the finish. So for me, this so far, I'm pretty gassed and I'm pretty much drenched in sweat. I even had to get my wife to pass me a towel midway since I forgot. But the cool thing is that when you're on this final go, you'll see these two, two awesome statues. They're part of the sort of victory lap that you get at the top that is completely flat. But riding up to here, it, the checkpoints also disappear on the left and you just get sort of history of that day, how, how fast other people have done it and your own 30 day PRs. Here, I'm giving it my best effort. I'm still riding out of the saddle, trying to push out as many watts as I can. My advice here is basically maybe to uh, really hold your pace until maybe the last two or three segments. That itself already adds up to probably about a mile in distance. So it's not like it's, it's going to be very close, but you really definitely don't want to expend too much energy too early. Also, one thing, other thing to note is that the, this hill, it ends just before the finish line. So you're going to finish the incline and then there's going to be a flat where you just finish the, the, the checkpoint. The checkpoint, it is just coming up right ahead and you'll see it. And one thing that I didn't mention before about Swift and in general is that in the Alpha Swift, it's sort of special in the game because also when you finish this ride, you get a prize. And one of the most coveted prizes of this ride is the wheels. Um, the, the reason being is that those are basically the lightest wheels in the game. And in this game, you're able to customize your gear, your avatar and so forth. So it's sort of a nice prize that can be only be unlocked by doing this ride. You don't have to do it under an hour, but um, the, doing it under an hour also unlocks an achievement, which spoilers, you're going to see me unlock and I get really excited about, but I'm going to leave uh, past best side cycling to go over that as he's going to be pretty exasperated and sort of uh, out of it when he comes back into audio very soon. But anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed the commentary and seeing this. My main goal of making this video is just to see and help other people get onto bikes. And with that, we're gonna go back to past best side cycling's audio. All right, almost there. Let's get the help. Get the wheels. I think we made it. Uh, let's see if we got the wheels. Oh. That was hard. Oh. Uh, what did we get? Prize we got? Helmet. Okay. Oh. Thanks so much for watching guys, that was, I know I didn't talk a lot during that, but you can definitely see I was working a lot. Now I was implementing more or less a new strategy of standing up. Hold on, I think my music's still going. One sec. The phone fell off at the last sprint because I got too excited. But uh, yeah, as you saw, I'm really quite the light rider, so I do have a slight handicap when it comes to these type of climbing efforts. But uh, uh, even though I think standing up for me is the easiest way to maintain uh, that 3.5 watts over over such a long time. Uh, but it's definitely been a long time coming, so I'm uh, really glad I could finally do this. And yeah. Hope you guys also tackle this instead. I'm not sure if this was a fun video to watch, but hopefully it might inspire some of you to try this out as well. Doesn't have to be on Swift on this on this climb. Maybe you just want to try out a big climb up there. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and happy riding. <laughs>